Hello everyone, so in today's video we're going to be doing something a bit different. We're not going to be continuing with the uh, headphone amplifier project. Uh, I've just finished the uh, PCB for the final amplifier, which I'll be uh, probably sharing here in the video somewhere. <laughs> um, that's going into production today, so in about a week I'll have the, uh, I'll have the, uh, the PCBs here. And then we can continue on with that project. I also have to order all the parts and stuff like that, figure out an enclosure, but hey, when we get there, um, I will make some more videos on that. So in the meantime, I've decided I uh, should start a, a, another project just to uh, continue what we've been doing here. Something a bit different, but still in the same vein of um, analog electronics. Uh, and that's going to be just a, a, a filler for now, and then when the, the parts for the headphone amplifier come in, I'm going to uh, continue with that project, and then we'll, we'll finish that one and continue with this one. Just want to get this one started so that you have some content to watch and uh, something to look forward to, okay? So, the next project that we are going to be working on is going to be this. We will be uh, designing a high voltage DC lab power supply. Okay, uh, I've always needed a, a high voltage power supply for uh, some projects that involve, for example, uh, valves or, or vacuum tubes and stuff like that, some Nixie tubes, or even just a, a high voltage stuff, for example, uh, switch mode power supplies that um, work from the mains and, and that sort of stuff. And uh, I've, I'm going to be showing you here in just a moment what I had to work with in the past. It's been a long time since I did any like a high voltage stuff, so I'm a bit rusty if that's with that uh, those things. But hey, uh, I want to get back into it, especially that I'm now doing the video stuff. I think it will be a very interesting for our next project, maybe to be a a, a tube amplifier. Uh, a an ample a uh, headphone amplifier based on a vacuum tube, so I think that's going to be a uh, very interesting. So we're going to be uh, discussing how uh, vacuum tubes work and all that sort of stuff. I've never done anything uh, very major with tubes except for a, a couple of uh, preamp designs and uh, played around with Nixie tubes. So I really want to uh, learn more about them and uh, work with them and you know, <laughs> join along for the ride. But in the meantime, I want to build something. Uh, to power those circuits in the future, something that's safe and something that I can uh, use not only for uh, vacuum tubes and stuff like that, but any sort of high voltage project that I may want to work with. Now, what are going to be our goals with this project? First of all, it's going to be a lab power supply. So it uh, has to conform to some, uh, a higher standard than just a, a regular <laughs> uh, workshop project, okay? So it has to have, by the way, this project, I'm going to make something that's very professional. I do fully intend on uh, selling this since I've, <laughs> I see that there aren't a lot of uh, high voltage power supplies on the internet for you to buy. Most of them are just those, uh, uh, those things from China that I, I really don't trust. And all of them, the cheap ones at least, the least expensive ones, are uh, switch mode. And uh, that's not good, even especially if you're going to be doing any precision stuff with high voltages. And uh, also if you're going to be doing any uh, valve projects or amplifiers and stuff like that, that's very sensitive. So uh, just the noise that comes out of those is just not suitable for that sort of stuff. And I want to make something that's more uh, uh, higher end with a uh, uh, lower cost. Now I'll talk more about how I'm going to be doing that, okay? So expect something in the end that's very professional. Right. So first of all, it has to be a uh, universal voltage input. So it needs to work here in Europe, where we have a uh, 230 volts, and it has to work in the UK with their 240, and also abroad with the 120 and 110 voltage inputs. Um, it's not going to be like a switch mode that you can just plug it in. Okay, since this is going to be a linear supply, uh, you have to uh, switch it in. Uh, but it should be universal and not require any sort of changes in the uh, in the components, just a switch. I'm going to make it transformerless, and uh, <laughs> talk more about that later. But uh, 
So uh, I'm not going to be putting an isolation transformer inside of it. The first reason why it's extremely heavy. And again, I want to sell this. So the least, the, the more <laughs> light something is, the better it is to ship and uh, all that. So I don't want a transformer in it because uh, that's just going to add first of all cost these trans transformers are extremely expensive and that's what makes the more high-end uh, lab supplies very uh expensive and uh also the bulb it's very bulky so the enclosure would have to be very big and stuff like that then i don't want it okay and uh, this doesn't mean it's not going to be safe because the way that i'm going to design it uh you should uh, power it from an isolation transformer. So I'm uh, removing that part, that part of the equation from the design and putting that onto you so that you have to provide your own isolation transformer with the parts that are available for you and we'll also uh, build one of those in the near future as well for this project because as soon as we start uh, tinkering with this sort of stuff, we will need uh, an isolation transformer to make sure that we are uh, safe and that's something that you can build on yourself and use with this project in the future, okay? It's going to be linear in the, because of the low noise requirement. So I'm going to make sure that it's a very much a, a low noise supply. And it's going to be linear, so it's not going to be as powerful. It won't deliver like a 300 volts at one amp, okay? Just forget about that. It's going to be more geared towards uh, that sort of low end stuff like uh, Nixie tubes and uh, some valve amplifiers, not power amplifiers, like really uh, um, uh, uh, high power stuff, but you can, you can surely do something with a, uh, a, uh, a low wattage power amp, valve power amp with this supply as well. So keep that in mind. So it's going to waste a lot of uh, uh, heat dissipated a lot of heat since it's linear it should be safe to operate okay so we've talked about the transformless topology it's just going to be a a, a rectifier directly from the voltage input which uh, shouldn't be mains it can be but it shouldn't you should put an isolation transform between your line voltage and uh, this device but uh, it is safe because uh there will be isolation between the power and control circuits. So everything that you're going to touch in the front panel, like every, every everything literally that you touch will be isolated from the power side, the stuff that actually have the uh, rectified mains voltage in it. Uh, so there will be transformers inside of it, just not a, a power transformer, okay? The, the real power transformer for the uh, main circuit, the power circuit. But everything is going to be isolated and we'll uh, probably do some videos on isolation, how to properly design something like this where you have a 5 volts on one side and you have like a 600 volts on the other side. And that's going to be a lot of fun as well. So expect a lot of uh, high voltage uh, um, uh, tutorials and uh, design stuff. Okay. So it will be safe. And uh, if you connect this directly to the mains, <laughs> then it's, not a, it's no longer safe, okay? But uh, if you connect it via an isolation transformer, then it's uh, going to be perfectly safe to operate. I put safe in quote marks because, hey, this is still a very high voltage and you, it's never safe when you're working with those sorts of voltages, but that's on your own discretion, okay? Uh, it's going to be well protected because it's a lab power supply. So uh, this is not just the power supply that you're going to be uh, putting into a, uh, a uh, amplifier or something like that or anything. This has to conform to some sort of a, uh, a standard because when you're dealing with lab stuff, all sorts of stuff can happen. There could be inductive loads, very inductive loads, very capacitive loads. You can have transient spikes from the load. You can have a voltage been applied into the uh, supply instead of it providing uh, uh, voltage and currents. You, you need to take care of all that and make sure that it doesn't self-destruct. First of all, that's very important. Because again, in a lab environment, everything can happen. Um, but it should also protect its load, okay? So it shouldn't just have a sharp transient when you turn it on, it should uh, uh, handle all that pretty well, okay? So that's going to be also very important. This is not just a, a quick and dirty thing that you uh, 
put uh, just to to power some Nixie tubes or a headphone amplifier. This is this is some <laughs> real stuff that uh, where uh, protection needs to be taken care of, and you need to put it as one of your uh, um, most important design criteria. Okay, it should be compact. It should fit into this uh, Hammond uh, enclosure. This is the enclosure into question. This is just a uh, one of the the projects that I sell and the, it's something that I've designed back in Brazil so I had to design it with the stuff that I had laying around so yeah it's just a uh, uh, soldering station a portable soldering station this is the one that I use to uh, solder all my circuits but yeah so it's not a, a very big case okay let's just take a look at this it's a, around 120 millimeters by 100 millimeters and its height is around let's say 55 millimeters so it's it's tiny so we're not going to be uh, able to dissipate a lot of power in an enclosure like this but i want it to be compact this is again not a high power type of supply i just want it to be uh, something that's compact and that's not going to uh, clutter up the the lab i already have way too much test gear and i don't have enough space for it <laughs> and I just want things that are compact now so yeah this is going to be more than suitable for this and as I've already talked about uh, it should deliver as much power as possible given the limitations of the uh, enclosure so uh, there will pro probably be some uh, uh, current fallback and the uh, power envelope will be uh, quite interesting because since it's just going to rectify the mains voltage then if you want 50 volts at the output you won't get a lot of current <laughs> let's just say that okay so this is going to be meant to be operated at a higher voltage not just operating at 100 volts all the time okay so keep that in mind so uh, yeah so that's going to be it oh by the way it's going to be digitally controlled none of that analog rubbish i want something that uh, you can uh, really dial in that you can configure and uh something that since you already have to put some sort of a um, digital circuit if you want to have any uh, display with the uh, measured and uh, uh, set voltages and currents oh by the way something that i didn't put in here it's going to be voltage and current adjustable so you can put a current limit in it so yeah it's going to be a, a very uh, fully featured type of supply so I'm going to show you something, okay? This is going to be our goal. This is what we are going to uh, be building. But I want to show you what I've done before in the past, okay? Keep, keep in mind that the stuff that I'm going to show you are some very old projects. So yeah, just uh, have that in mind, okay? So the first time that I wanted to do something with a high voltage was just to power a couple of uh, Nixie tubes and some uh, neon lamps. And uh, the way that I started was probably the way that uh, I think everyone starts. So I started with uh, something like this. So what this is, is just a uh, flash unit from a uh, disposable camera. Okay, as you can see, it's pretty cheap. So yeah, as you can see, it's, uh, it's pretty cheap. It's not good. But uh, it was enough, okay? This was the capacitor that already came with it. It just says uh, 299 three times. I have no clue <laughs> what sort of capacity this has. But um, this is how I, st I started doing this. So uh, it's basically, it, you put a, um, I think it was 1.5 or 3 volts here. It was a, uh, from a couple of uh, um, alkaline cells. And it generates, I think it was a, uh, 200 volts or something like that here in the output and I just uh, had some uh, crocodile clips here to uh, power my uh, uh, Nixie tube circuit. So that's how I started. I just needed something that was a uh, uh, very quick and dirty and something that was safe. I didn't want to mess around with the mains because there is a lot of power in those outlets and I just was so afraid of high voltages back then. I was really afraid, so I I was afraid of this thing. Okay, This is dangerous, but it's not as dangerous as just rectifying main voltage. So yeah, this was the first thing that I've done. 
Uh, keep in mind, this I think it was like 2014. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was 2014. So yeah, and uh, in that same year, I decided to uh, uh, step up the game because I got some uh, uh, nice uh, vacuum tubes and uh, some 12 AU7s or 12 AX7s, I think. And I wanted to do a, a preamp, and I and just this this thing just wasn't going to cut it, it just outputted a lot of noise and it, it just didn't have enough current to uh, supply for the uh, for valves. So I've decided to play around with the mains and the first thing that I've done, which was uh, very bad, was this thing, this atrocious thing. This is just a uh, full wave rectifier, this you'll plug into the mains. Again, let me just Put a warning here just don't do this at home seriously just don't replicate this garbage okay this is very dangerous and if you if you play around with high voltage you're doing so at your own risk okay this is not something that you should be playing around without uh knowing what can happen and being very careful okay so but uh so just build this it has a a couple of a uh, hundred microfarad 400 volt capacitors these are pretty good. They're from Rubicon. This is from Rubicon, and this is a Panasonic. So yeah, that's it. This is just a uh, rectifier with filter capacitors, some uh, bleeder resistors, and an LED. And I, I, I think I've only plugged this in directly into the mains one time just to <laughs> um, test it. But then very quickly. I, I've never used this directly in the main support or anything. I was just too afraid of that. So what I did again back in 2014, I've built this thing. This thing is a uh, an isolation transformer. Okay, so had the outputs here. It was a 120 volt only. Okay, because uh, that's what we had back in the day in Brazil. No. Uh, let me just focus this in. So this is what I've designed, and uh, I had a, a two forty volts here in the output, and also a hundred and twenty. So what I could do is I would just uh, grab this in here and just uh, tighten these in to here, and get the rectified voltage here in the output. So yeah, uh, I'm just going to open this one up just so that you can see how. Uh, crappy was my designs back then but hey this was just a, a very quick lab project i needed it so i built it let me just open this up and let's take a look at what i've done here okay so let's take a look inside i know this is going to be horrible like <laughs> but with these biting posts they are just flopping around they are just the cheapest thing that i could buy back then it, this is just horrible I, i'm already getting some very bad vibes from this they they just they don't i, I can't tighten them them up all the way so, oh this is just gonna be horrible isn't it oh my god this is <laughs> i haven't opened this up in basically in six years <laughs> This is atrocious. <laughs> this is good. This is good stuff to show. Okay, so that uh, everyone can see. <laughs> okay, so what we have here, we basically have two transformers. They are just uh, back to back. You have the uh, primary of this transformer going into the uh, mains. Then you have the two secondaries plugged together, and then the primary of the uh, second transformer goes to the uh, output binding posts. Okay, so I've used some uh, very cheap, crummy, shitty uh, hot glue. There is a fuse here. It's, again, just flopping around. <laughs> and, and it's even a ceramic fuse. Oh, fancy. <laughs> again, just hot glued, and with time, the thing just disintegrates. Oh, this is horrible. At least I thought about fusing it. Oh, and it's even worse because it is fused on the secondary. Oh, this is, oh, this is awful. I fused the secondary. I didn't fuse the primary. Oh, this is amazing. 
<laughs> so yeah, you can start with a, a piece of shit like this, okay? It's, it's how everyone starts. <laughs> Just so that you can have an idea. That you can build an isolation transformer. It's not a <laughs> magic. It's not something that's impossible. You just have two transformers back to back like this and you get a, a low current uh, isolation transformer pretty easily. And apparently I had a shortage of screws because there are no screws. Oh, the whole thing is just falling apart already. Yeah, because I, I didn't. I, I, I didn't screw the, these in. I just hot melt grilled them in. And, okay, let me just put this back in. <laughs> Okay, this is this is just horrible. Okay, but this this goes to show like the sort of stuff that you can start working with, and this is safe to a degree if this fuse is here and you can make this a bit safer. But hey, it's it's a good start. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, let me just uh, 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 screw this thing in, and uh, let's move to something a bit better. Okay. So, now that this uh, atrocious thing is put back together, uh, let's take a look at something that's uh, a bit better than this. And um, look how I've progressed. I think it was two years, because uh, I've outlasted this pretty quick. I don't, I don't think it, this thing even survived a year. Okay, so let's see what I've done. So later that year, or probably later in the next year, I just got tired of having this thing around and this garbage here. This was very uh, dangerous when I was working with it because hey, I had live voltage, live high voltage right here. So I've decided to build something a little bit better. Oh, let me grab because this thing is very heavy. I've built this. <laughs> Another monstrosity. It's very big. <laughs> As you can see, this thing is, is very big. Let me even uh, take some of the uh, zoom out. Okay, now we focus. Yeah. So this thing, I've built it just a blanking plate here, and this was the back. So I had a switchable, hundred and seventy volt. Let me, oh, let me focus this thing. So I had a switchable, hundred and seventy volt, and a three hundred and forty volt. So this means that this outputs DC, okay? So this is wired for uh, 120 volts. This is not wired for the European uh, 230 voltage. So I'm not, I just removed the fuse here. There's just nothing here just to, until I do something with this. I don't think I'm going to do anything with this thing. I'm just going to uh, leave it here. Um, so I don't think I'm even going to uh, rewire this. But you get the mains here, it comes in to a uh, speak on connector. And here in the output, with this uh, XLR, very safe stuff, having high voltage in an SLR con XLR connector, <laughs> great. <laughs> what, again, what was I thinking? I, just, I think I just use an XLR because it has uh, the three, uh, three uh, uh, pins. So instead of having uh, the uh, two outputs, I just had one connector. Oh, that's just great. But um, this is probably like ground and uh, high voltage here and low voltage here. Because this not only supplies uh, the uh, high voltage, but there is also a transformer here, this one, which is a, a 9 volts at 1 amp, which uh, supplies 12 volts, I think. It was probably 12 volts here in one of these pins, uh, a regulated, I think. I, I don't remember much of this. I, I, when we open this up, we'll take a look at that, but uh, it was probably 12 or 12.6 uh, 12, 12 or uh, 6.3 volts here in the uh, output. So basically I could just uh, get, grab a, a very dangerous XLR cable, plug it in here and power a, uh, an amplifier directly from this. I built this because I really wanted to make a headphone amplifier. A valve headphone amplifier. I never did it, so um, I just used this to experiment. So I just had a, a an XLR cable that came in here and um, had the uh, uh, separate cables so that I could uh, power my prototypes. 
So yeah, that's uh, again, same thing as before, the two back-to-back -back transformers, and this is just an auxiliary transformer. In this case, I've used, let me just see here, a uh, 12 volts at one amp uh, transformers, okay? So they, these are from Brazil, so we don't have VA ratings there, apparently. They're all rated like this. But, uh, so yeah. Let me uh, open this one up, and uh, let's see what it did inside. Oh, great, one feet. Uh, it's already missing, yeah, apparently. From the journey from Brazil to here, it didn't survive. This thing is very heavy. I had to put this in my, uh, in my luggage, so it wasn't fun. Let me open this thing up. Let's see. So oh, let's look inside of this one. I expect this one to be a lot better constructed than this monstrosity. But hey, this was again a quick and dirty one. I I just wanted it to be a better <laughs> quick and dirty one. Uh, so, yeah, th this, this isn't going to be good, all right. Oh! <laughs> oh, well, this is, this is something. <laughs> so, it's all point-to-point uh, -point wired, as you can clearly see. And we have here a, uh, a, uh, I forgot the name of these things, the, the, uh, th the posts. And a phenolic board. Oh yeah. Oh, this is this is something. So yeah, let's take a look at this. So the mains comes in here and goes to the uh, primary of the first transformer. Then the secondaries are just joined in right here. And then the output of that probably goes somewhere in here. Yeah, it goes here. This is the output of the primary of the second of the second transformer. This goes to the uh, selector switch, which then goes to this uh, uh, terminal post here with a uh, bridge rectifier. I think that's a bit difficult to see, but hey, there is a uh, bridge rectifier down there. Let me see if I can put something behind it. So, yeah, there you go. A little uh, one of those. I think it was a W. One, yeah, w, W10M bridge rectifier into a, a very big capacitor. And, uh, oh, great, the markings are on the bottom and it's hot glued into place and it's not going anywhere because this thing is, oh, I used some nice hot glue this time at least. But, uh, yeah, it's down there and uh, I can see this is probably like a 450 volt. Probably 100 microfarad or maybe a 200, 220 microfarad capacitor. So yeah, this is this is very much, this is this decent. It could even be a, a 470 micro. This, this was going to be this was some expensive stuff. But yeah, so this is the high voltage stuff. This just goes then uh, directly to the output here. Now, for the second the the low voltage stuff. Uh, the windings probably come somewhere around in here. There should be another bridge rectifier. And there isn't. There's just a... Uh, oh, it's discrete. Here it is. So here you have a, a, a discrete bridge rectifier. There are four. Uh, one and four 007s here. Going into a, a 4,700 microfarad capacitor at 25 volts. So this would be probably at around a 12 point something volts here, 13 volts since it was a 9 volt transformer. Then we have a very big 5.6 ohm 10 watt resistor here. I have no clue why that is in there. Oh, oh, it's, yeah, it's directly across the output. No, it's not directly across the output. Oh, it's going into here, and from here, we have some um, some wires. So it's in series with this thing. What is it? Oh, it's a 7805 regulator down here, just flapping around with some captain tape. To... 
<laughs> to secure it into place. Oh, I, I, I don't know. I probably had a shortage of, <laughs> of um, <laughs> screws. Oh, this is just horrible. But yeah, so there it is in its own heatsink. So this is just to, uh, so this is probably a 6.3 volt output. Yeah. Let me just see one thing in here. Where is, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, here you go, the center terminal. It's passing through uh, to rectifying diode. So just to uh, elevate the output voltage. So since this is going to be like 0.6 and 0.6. So the output's probably around 6.3, 6.2 volts. And add in some filtering and that goes to the output. So this resistor here is just here to uh, uh, drop some of the voltage across from it to, uh, so that this heatsink doesn't have to be uh, very massive. So yeah, that's what I did. This is again horrible. It's not good, but it is a, a huge step up from this garbage. It's not perfect, but this is the sort of stuff that uh, you usually start up with. Okay, this is literally it. Uh, this is a good, a good supply if you want a unregulated uh, high voltage here in the output, but it's not enough for what I want. I really want something that's adjustable. But uh, hey, if all you want is just something to uh, uh, power up and play with um, valve amplifiers, this is more than adequate. I'll just uh, put some protection here and change the uh, connectors and stuff like that if I were you, but hey, so yeah, this is, <laughs> this is an interesting uh, uh, look at the past. I probably built this in 2016, I guess. So yeah, <laughs> this was interesting. So yeah, we are going to be building something uh, more like a uh, more professional. We we are going to be uh, designing a uh, an isolation transformer in the future as well, just so that uh, we can see how that works. But uh, the the final supply will look nothing like this. Okay, I just wanted to show this to you just so that you have an idea of where this comes from and uh, how can you do this yourself. Let me just uh, close this up and uh, we'll talk a, a bit more later, okay? So let me just close this thing and I'll be right back. So this was quite interesting to take a look at. This is very heavy, by the way. <laughs> This is really interesting. This is missing the seat again, yeah. But hey, it was very nice to uh, take a look at some older projects. It's always nice to do this kind of stuff, look in the past and see what you've done and uh, how much you've progressed. Um, so yeah, um, this is going to be our next project. I just wanted to show this to you just so that you know where all of this comes from and um, also so that you understand uh, that this is not black magic this is not difficult anyone can do this uh, sort of stuff again you need to do this at your own risk you need to uh, uh, take care of yourself and know the dangers of working with uh, high voltages i'm not uh, liable for anything here i'm just i'm not going to be liable for anything during this uh, project series i'm just showing you the stuff that you can do so that uh, you can make some informed decisions and uh, know about this sort of stuff if you want to, uh, to follow along, if you want to build this sort of stuff yourself, hey, be careful and take care of yourself. Know the dangers and know uh, how to mitigate a lot of stuff. So, yeah, this is going to be an interesting one. Uh, this was good to see. Uh, this is not difficult. Yeah, uh, we'll be talking about uh, uh, series voltage regulators, series pass, like uh, your 7805s, uh, LM317 stuff. And uh, we're going to be designing something that's low voltage first, just so that you can understand the basics and how all of this works. Then later, we will be uh, designing actually high voltage of regulator. And then from there on, we're going to be uh, doing some interesting videos on protection, on uh, current limiting and all that sort of stuff. Very nice. And in the end, we'll have a, uh, a finished circuit just like we did in a previous one. And hey, a finished product if everything goes right. I'll have to write a lot of code for that, but hey, I'm looking forward to doing this sort of stuff. I think this is going to be very uh, fun. And uh, I hope you learn a lot from looking at these uh, monstrosities and uh, 
I think you'll learn a lot in the next couple of videos about voltage regulation and high voltages. It's going to be very generic, so the next videos, uh, you can apply that to any sort of stuff that you want. If you want to do low voltage, high current, just low voltage, low current, high voltage, high current, hey, it's just a matter of scalability. Uh, the theory that we are going to be uh, going through is just uh, generic stuff that you can apply to almost any sort of voltage regulation, okay? So I hope you've enjoyed this video. This was just an overview. Uh, the next couple of videos are going to be uh, uh, discussing this. So yeah, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this one. Now, if you have any suggestions or feedback, leave them down in the comments below. So uh, yeah, this was, this was it. Thank you so much for watching. and. Uh, I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.